1976. That was the year when the Chicago and Milwaukee metropolitan area became home to Six Flags Great America. Or as it was called during the first chapter of its life, Marriott's Great America, Northern Illinois' destination amusement park for the last 45 years. This place, it means a lot to me, my well-being, and my childhood. I've been coming here since I was in the second grade. And in 2019 alone, I went over 50 times, including every summer weekend, Fright Fest, Holiday in the Park. Of course, none of that applies now. COVID's just been a big kick in the balls, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Great America may not be anything like Disney, Universal, any Cedar Fair Park, but it does leave me in awe every time I visit, so I love the place. So to honor the legacy that Great America has left in my life, I want to dive into the park's rich history involving one of its most exclusive defunct flat rides by Intamin. Existing for over 35 years before Y2K, one of the last of its kind, the Sky World, better known as the Triple Ferris Wheel. Only a few of these were ever produced, in a few select locations, and just gaze upon the triple ferris wheel. It truly does look like a work of fiction because you don't expect one of these things to be built. Especially back in the 1970s, that's unexpected. No one really ever talks about the Sky World, so I want to give it some recognition. Let's find out what happened to the triple ferris wheel here at Great America. Okay, enough of that crap, let's get to the video. The 1970s for Chicago, I see it as a golden age of entertainment in the thrill ride market. Before this era, the niche was relatively untapped. One year after unveiling the first ever indoor amusement park, the Marriott Corporation, a company that prides itself on local hotels and acquisitions in the fast food industry, decided to break off into a new branch by developing amusement parks. The Gurney location near Chicago was one of two Marriott parks that were constructed. A third one was supposed to be guaranteed for the DC area, however that never really came to be. The two parks that were built on the other hand, Illinois' Marriott's Great America and California's Marriott's Great America, were both designed on the company's previous hotel sites and or purchased or acquired land. At debut, each location featured kind of the same attractions. For example, they both had a Whizzer, a Schwarzkopf extended jumbo jet, along with Grease Lightning and Tidal Wave, another Schwarzkopf product, this time their Shuttle Loop model. You get the point, each park was pretty much identical for the first few years, and obviously they both had a Sky Whirl, an attraction that would be marketed as the first ever triple Ferris wheel. Subcontracted by Intamin, the ride experience went like this. There were three arms that were linked to the center axis of rotation. One arm at a time would be positioned into the loading zone while the other two were lifted 100 feet to allow circulatory views of the park. Since there were three arms, one ferris wheel could not complete the ride cycle until there were at least two dispatches, meaning that one ride was the equivalent to two ride cycles. The objective of this was to increase capacity, while also adding a bit more ride time. The Sky World in Illinois was located towards the back of the park. It was near the future site where American Eagle would be. The California Sky World, it was in the location that was prior to Invertigo. Besides this, I can't really say anything else about the ride. The experience, well, it was a Ferris wheel. You go clockwise, but then you change your position halfway through the ride. Now I may have jumped the gun when I started talking about the triple ferris wheel, because in actuality, Intamin subcontracted a different variant of the multi-ferris wheel. In 1973, Hershey Park got the first ever double ferris wheel. It wasn't a triple, it was a double. Get it? Besides featuring one less ferris wheel, this model, instead of having a center axis of rotation in the middle, the double had two pistons on each side that would lower each wheel into a separate loading station. Appearance-wise, it tried to resemble more of a seesaw. Once again, I can't describe this thing any further because there's only so much I can say about a Ferris wheel. However, ride system and presentation aside, let's talk about the demand. Each product did moderately well. The success for them was pretty underwhelming. They only sold about four for each one. Buyers peaked during the mid-70s to the late 80s. The final double Ferris wheel was sold to QA Entertainment City in 84. The last triple Ferris wheel went to Lotte World as Hydra in 89. After this, it was decided that the multi-ferris wheel concept would be discontinued due to the lack of demand. That explains why there wasn't that many multi-wheels, but it doesn't explain why these models are completely extinct. What reasoning do we have for them all going defunct? I have a theory, however I think it goes more in depth through the materials and mechanics of the ride, so take this as you will. Remember how I said Intamin subcontracted the ride and didn't produce it? Well, that's because if you know your company history, Intamin subcontracted amusement rides when they were in their youth. 
The real developer was an Australian company going by the name Wagner Bureau. If you know this business, then you also realize that their involvement with the industry isn't their strong suit. They only have a few recorded flat rides that are in their portfolio, and you can make a claim that the multi-wheel is their highlight. If I go into the issues that may have plagued the multi-ferris wheels after extensive operation, here is what I found. According to the previous Marriott's Great America fan page, it discusses that during the end of its service life, what they found during inspection and demolition, is that the ride was prominently covered in rust. To this statement, I was skeptical. Since Wagner Bureau, they had a business division that established in steel and glass installations. That section of the company was in operation since the 1960s, so I would assume they would know how to build and maintain a structure to resist humidity. For a second, I thought this wasn't true until I focused on the motors that rotated the wheels. If you look closely, well not too close, there was a massive ventilation cover over the motor. This was supposed to be a cooling system to make sure the motors would not overheat by allowing air circulation from the outside. The unintended consequence of this, it would allow an access point for humidity and moisture to enter the interior of the attraction. Now, maybe all of this could just be me theorizing, because these rides did last a long time before they went defunct. The Sky Whirl at Six Flags Great America, I already mentioned, it lasted from 76 to 2000. Three and a half decades is a very conservative lifetime. California's Great America Sky Whirl lasted about the same amount of time, minus a couple of years. Meaning these attractions, at least the triple ferris wheels, had no immediate complications to the ride's productivity. Rather, they just broke down from extended use. I can't really say the same about the double ferris wheel. Compared to the triple, these ones didn't last as long. Not because this version was a lot more difficult to manage, they were closed on separate reasons. The Hershey Park double wheel, that one actually did last a long time, from 73 to 2004. Kings Island Zodiac is another story, it lasted from 75 to 86, just because it was later relocated to Wonderland Sydney, where it operated till 2004. The last two, Scorpion at Parque de la Ciudad and Double Wheel at Kiwa Entertainment City, they are both rotting away on their properties, since both these parks are not really operating. So if you want to get a glimpse of the Wagner Bureau Intamin subcontracted double Ferris wheels, well, these two are your last chances. So the double Ferris wheel version didn't exactly close because of structural complications. Rather, each park went in a different direction deciding whether or not to continue operation. Or in the last two cases, it's completely irrelevant if the park just shuts down entirely. To close, I'm just grateful for bringing some attention to this lost part of amusement history. Like many of you, I was not born when the triple ferris wheel was operating, so it was nice to talk about it at least. Oh, one last thing I want to acknowledge. Every year at Six Flags Grid America, during their Fright Fest event, they always leave an easter egg to the Sky Whirl in the cemetery. They put three of the old cabins there, along with a bunch of old memorabilia to pass attractions they had. I love when parks do something like that, it's pretty nice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.